Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus Republic of Gamers 1080 Ti Poseidon and yes, if you're those avid eyes among you, if you didn't already know about this card it's air and water, it's a full blown hybrid 1080 Ti but the thing is, if it's a hybrid, can it really do air and water and still be good at it? Time to find out, I suppose. So the Asus design and graphics cards are a love or hate thing. Uh, I've actually got to the point where I, I'm kind of really liking them. Now we've got a lovely smooth backplate across the back. The uh, older Strix model used to have cutouts and stuff down here. So this one is much smoother. And I'd actually say this is probably the best looking backplate um, that I've seen on any of the Asus graphics cards to date. It has uh, two eight pins down the side. It's a kind of normal layout. Now this here is RGB and it's an infinity um, mirror type thing. I'll pop an image up so that you can see. Now you can disable it. It's up to you whether you like it or you don't. You get your RGB here with the infinity mirror and you get the RGB on the back plate. Like I said, you can turn it off. It can be nice. I also find it a little bit distracting. This is probably the one bit about the card that I'm not 100% certain about. Um, I think uh, I'd probably end up like dimming it down or something like that but many of you may like it. It's got some lovely sort of accents. It's probably the best way I can put it. We can see that the, uh, the Nvidia forced GTX branding has made it to yet another GTX uh, card. I think it's gonna be happening on all of them now. Um, but I, I do like the fact that they have gone silver. This now instantly makes me think one of the older Matrix cards. It's got the same dual fan, big beefy dual fan. The one thing that I did find kind of interesting though is considering it is a uh, hybrid card, the, um, the Strix 1080 Ti was a much bigger fan, uh, fin stack. And by fin stack, I mean these parts in here. The, the fin stack on the other card, the all air card, it was enormous. And considering that we've got all of this um, extra material in, I was kind of expecting it to kind of hang down a little bit more. It isn't a dual slot though, it's just over a two slot, so a 2.5, but most of it is this plastic. It's not, you know, there's not a great deal of fins going on there, which is something we're gonna have to watch when we get into having a look at the temperatures and all that sort of stuff. I have done my testing, I have done air and water testing, but the reason why I'm saying I've done my testing is it does mean that we can break out the screwdrivers and uh, have a look. So there we go with the uh, back plate. Like I said, you can see it's actually really nice and plain. It's not got any of the cutouts. Now we've got the 100% automation when it comes to the actual PCB. It's made by robots, basically. Um, there's no flux. It's super, super clean and tidy. It's got a very matte look to it. It's almost a shame that they've covered it up. But anyway, covering it up doesn't really matter because it's all good. Now, I've literally saved this part to show you on camera because it's probably gonna end up being a mistake. Yes, it is. So all off. I've not cleaned the thermal paste because like I said, I've been doing this with you live on camera. But you can see it's a really kind of nice, kind of theoretical, not theoretical, logical, that's the word I'm looking for, logical and clean looking design. Got the missing RAM chip because there's only 11 gigabyte of memory on there, not, tw excuse me, 12. Around the back though, it does has given me the opportunity to uh, show you these. Now these are the two fan headers. You can put PWM fans in there or DC fans. PWM a four pin, DC a three pin, and you can wire those up and you can actually, those fans you can um, then link into the graphics card temperature, which is really nice. Some of the newer Asus motherboards, you can actually do that as a normal thing now as well. So you can link your, all of your fan temps, if they're linked into the motherboard, into the graphics card temperature, which is epic. But what it has also got is this extra, these four pins are an RGB output. So it's actually, when you see it like that, there's not a great deal to it, but then this is the main event. So you can see that we do still have a massive section of copper in the middle, but you can see that you've got some of these copper heat pipes around the outside as well. Now what you, they do do, now these black ports 
Um, they're not waterproof or water sealed blanks. These are just covers. So um, the ones on the other side, the big silver ones, they have got an O-ring on them, so they will seal. These ones on the back don't. Now, the reason why I've taken it off is to show you deep down inside and typical right at the end, it unfocuses. But you can see that there is a little channel in there. Now, essentially what that is, is the best way I can explain it is it's one of these heat pipes. Um, now, you do get a section in the middle which has got more water in it, but it's the, the heat pipes are in there to be able to uh, circulate it round. And there's quite a lot of material in here, to be fair. It, there's, it's hella heavy. It's much heavier than I was expecting. But what you can see is we've got direct contact with the uh, MOSFETs on the right hand side. The memory is getting cooled as well. You can see the nice big chamber in the middle as well. You can actually see some of the copper and the heat pipes down this end. Now what this does mean, because we have fins and we have this, is it will cool both. The uh, heat from the graphics card or the core will still make its way through into the fins and can get cooled. Or if you do want to go that extra mile and loop it into something, then uh, it actually goes in around there. And one thing I will say is when you are running it on water, because it never hits the temperature threshold, which I will talk to you about temperatures in a minute, the fans actually never spin. So it does come 100% passive at that point and you're just relying on the water cooling. You can, if you want, override it if you wanted to, but to be fair, as I'll explain to you in a moment, there's no real need. Okay then peeps, so at this part of the review is when I remind you that you can go to the OC3D website, look at all the graphs, look at all of the testing that we've done, uh, and I will whittle through some of the points with you here. Now, in England at the moment, the sun has decided to come out. So I've actually been doing some testing and I've, I'm lucky enough to have air conditioning. But I did some air conditioned results and I did some normal air results as well. So I've got lots of details to talk to you about. But temperatures, with these is normally the point when there is a tripping point and you find out that there's going to be some kind of compromise. I say normally. Now we did talk about the fact that it hasn't got the massive 1080 Ti Strix cooler on it. I'd say this is more comparable to the Strix that you would have got on the original 1080, not the 11G one. So it's not it's the two slot one and not the, the 2.5 slot one. So when I bring the graph up, there's a couple of things in here that I do want to talk to you about. So the um, the air result, 74 degrees. If it was the 1080 with this thickness cooler on it, it would have been about 70 degrees. So the fact that we've only gone four degrees up, but we have, we're also cooling all those extra cooler cores for the 1080 Ti, that is actually a positive thing to say. If this was below, um, uh, with the older cards, best way I can explain these two results is what I would have been expecting with one of the older Poseidons is I was expecting air to have been about 80 and I would have been hoping that the water cooling was below 60. So these numbers are actually a really positive thing. I think they probably could have added that extra fin stack on and dropped the temperatures that little bit more for air, but it would have made the card enormous. And I think this is probably slightly more tailored to the uh, water cooling ability rather than the air ability. I do know that the reason why it's 74 degrees is it has a 75 degree fan profile. So when I tested this 74 degrees, it was in a 20 degrees air controlled room aircon basically but rather than freeze the room I put it to a sensible level just so that you've got some normal temperatures but in the office this week I've been regularly experiencing 25 and 26 degree temperatures in the office before I've even turned a bench rig on it stayed at 75 degrees it just got marginally the fan speeds went up a little bit when we look at the air though 44 degrees and that was when uh, we had the 20 degrees controlled when I turned the aircon off, let the room warm up again, on this point, it went up to 27 degrees and we only got, it's not in the graph, but we only got 51 degrees as an all out maximum in a 27 degrees room and it was literally baking hot. Now, um, when I did test this, Basically, I've got a uh, graphics card test rig and I didn't want to build this all big mean Fandango thing. I just wanted to get the review done because 
To be honest with you, I'm a reviewer. I don't really build that much stuff anymore. I know I should do, I do know I should do, but I wanted to get the review out and done quickly. If I do anything nice with this and I build it into something, then it will be its own standalone video. Because if I built this into my racing rig, the results, I wouldn't have been able to have showed you the performance results. So I've always got this kind of fight and this pool that I have to swing between. So I did have a bit of a ghetto system. So I was running a, uh, an external tower radiator, just looped into the graphics card just to give us the temperatures. Um, if you'd stuck the CPU in the loop, you might have got a degree or two on top of the GPU temperatures, but nothing particularly, you know, uh, you know, no massive increases, just to give you kind of an idea. Believe me, it wasn't a pretty sight, but it did the job and it meant that I could get this review to you within a few days rather than, let's face it, if, with the way the weather's been in a few weeks, because I might have been out a little bit more. So temperatures, this would have been the point I would have been expecting to, like I said, if there have been compromises. It's not quite as good as this one on air and it's not quite as good as this one on water. Temperatures wise on water, it did really well, no matter what the temperature of the room was. Then when we go on to clock speeds, to be honest with you, with a 1080 Ti, the, most of them seem to peak around the 1950 megahertz mark. I have had some just do 90, but the one that we normally pay more attention to is the average. So when we pop this up, this boosted as a maximum up to uh, 2050 on its own. Now you do need to keep in mind that out the box, that means it's overclocking itself by over 300 megahertz, which is why when people say to me, oh, I only managed to overclock my 1080 tie by 65 megahertz, it's so bad. No, it's not. It has actually already overclocked it for you, probably by at least 300 megahertz. I think the boost on this is 17 something. So when you think the fact that you know we were getting peaks on this of 20, sorry, 2050, you can see that it's already quite capable. Now uh, you can see that I've done an air and a water test. Now the average was slightly below 2,000 megahertz for the air test chuck the water in, do the exact same temperature, and the average then went up to almost what the uh, peak was, which was amazing, absolutely amazing. So introducing water will mean that your average will be consistently higher. So that's another thing that we've learned is that the uh, 1080 Ti's do like those really, really low temperatures. And when I run these tests to get the average, I run them for a very set, specific time as well. I literally loop them on Unigen for an hour and I have GPU Z open so that I can record the min, uh, sorry, the maximums on one, the averages on the other. So this was, again, it, it wasn't like it was luckier. I left it running longer. They're all treated exactly the same every time. And that's why my results, you can look at these graphs and they're all, you know, very, very compar comparable. Game performance, we just flished them up real quickly because at the end of the day, it's a 1080 Ti, you know it's going to do well. We started running Unigen Superposition as well. That's a benchmark that you can get for free online. You can pay for the upgrades if you want to be able to do um, bench loops and all that sort of stuff. It's actually something that I've been enjoying using. And then one that we all know is um, Firestrike Ultimate. Now this is kind of interesting because you can see that with a manual overclock on the Strix, it was slightly higher. That would have been right because it was running at 2100 megahertz and that was the manual. We can see where the normal Strix is just slightly below it with its normal uh, GPU boost thing. To be honest with you, I want to take the uh, manual overclocks out of these because the GPU boost is so good now. It's almost, you know, there's so little to gain from the, the manual overclock. It's not really worth me doing. And there's always the silicon lottery to talk about um, when, we, when you do that as well. And it's, it's never down to how they're binned or anything like that. It's really just luck. It's only the real crappy low end cards that um, uh, you're gonna get lower overclocks on. So award, and I can rattle through with this and it deserved the performance award. I genuinely was expecting worse temperatures on this. It's not as much of a compromise as it was before. The air temps being slightly above 70 degrees, I'm really not that fussed about to be fair because of the cooler size and the only way that they could have done it would have been by either turning the fans up by reducing the, um, the thermal limit on the card 
or by just putting a massive, massive cooler on it. And I think they found the balance with it. 74, 75 degrees on a 1080 uh, Ti is really not a bad thing, but really I couldn't understand how good they got the water temps. It was 51 degrees in a baking hot room or well below 50 degrees in what I would consider, you know, normal kind of evening gaming temperatures. Um, you know, and that's gonna be the sort of temperatures that you're gonna have on in the winter when you've got your heating on and all that sort of stuff. The only thing about it that I wasn't sure about, if I'm particularly honest, was the infinity window. But that's gonna be something that you're just gonna to have to um, make your own peace with. Now, the thing at the end to talk about is it's not exactly cheap. It's 900 pounds. But then when you've got to think about is, is the, it's the something that certain people aren't gonna like the fact that they have to water block a block up themselves. And with this, you can put water in it, it doesn't void your warranty. Although there are manufacturers out there that let you take the cooler off but and you don't void the warranty. But with this, you haven't got any of that worry. You've also got the, the um, better, you know, the security of knowing that if you do need to take your water out or your pump fails or something like that, you can literally just drain the water out of it put your bungs back on and then you can, obviously you need to make sure that the water's drained out of it, but then you can run it on air and let the fans go. You, uh, the fans don't run when it's on water because it never really hits the temperature threshold for them to kick in, but you can manually force them to go on if you want that extra bit of crazy lunatic lower temperatures, although it really doesn't need it. Um, and to be honest with you, when it's sideways on, it doesn't look that bad it does look like a beefy water block card i think the only aesthetical drawback with this is going to be if you're one of those lucky people that has a vertical mount and you're going to see a lot of vertical mount cases coming through now cooler master actually have a bracket that you can put in any case that's got seven slots at the back and vert vertically mount your graphics card keep an eye open for that i have done a video about it as well um, look on my channel for the rgb ryzen gaming build that bracket is in there and the only way the only reason why i would say it's an aesthetical drawback is because if it's vertical like this you can't see the water flowing through and it does just look like an air card so it's not too bad it's definitely got its place I'm not sure whether I'd want to use one personally though. So it's really gonna be cut down to personal preference with you guys. And the reason why I wouldn't wanna use one, maybe not wanna use one personally, is because at the end of the day, I'm not afraid of stripping a graphics card down and putting a water block on. But if you are and you want the security about the warranty and you want that backup of being able to go air maybe later if you want, or let's face it, you could be building your rig now and you're gonna stick your water in later, it can cross those and gray those lines and cross those boundaries. So it's really gonna be if it's the card for you or not. If not, and you just want a big stonking massive air-cooled card, there's obviously lots of ones out there, but the Strix, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna necessarily say it's prettier, but the cooler on it is epic. Um, so that's it really. I'd love to know your thoughts underneath. I have tried to whittle through this one as quickly as I possibly can, because let's face it, it is only a 1080 Ti but there was some funky stuff to talk about. Uh, so yeah, that is it. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with the OC3D Performance Award winning Asus Republic of Gamers Poseidon. But for now, that's me, out. <laughs>